Hi and welcome to this last video on integration for the P1 syllabus. In this video we're going to be talking about volumes. So the way that we are going to do this is we're going to take a two-dimensional curve or line and we're going to rotate it around one of the axes and from that we get what's called a three-dimensional solid of revolution and we're interested in finding out the volume of this solid. So imagine if we take a, a straight line like y equals 3 and rotate it around <clears throat> between two values you see we get a cylinder. If you get a straight line like y equals a half x and rotate it around the x-axis between say 2 and 0 you get a cone. Let's have a look at what it looks like when we rotate one of these curves or in this case a straight line around the x-axis. So we've got this area underneath the curve in this case between 0 and 2 and let's rotate that around the x-axis and have a look. You can see that the shape that we're producing is a cone. That makes sense if you think about it. Now we could work out the volume of that cone. A third pi r squared h. The radius in this case is 1. And the height, because we're going from 0 to 2, would be 2 for this cone. Okay, So we could work out the volume that way, or we could use integration. And that's the techniques we're interested in in this little uh, exercise, is working out the volume using integration. Similar to the idea when we worked out the area underneath a curve or a straight line, I'm going to rotate these five rectangles around the x-axis. Now we can work out the, like we did before, the area of each of these rectangles very simply, and we can also work out the volume of the shapes that result when we do that. Because as you can see, when we rotate this around, we're going to get some disks. Okay, and each disk is just a little cylinder. And we know the formula for that, that's pi r squared h. Okay. This isn't a very good approximation though for the volume, so what we can do is increase the number of disks. So as you can see, the actual volume of these disks are going to be a little bit more than the volume of the cone that's produced when we rotate that line around the axis. But as we did with areas, we can increase the number of disks in this case. And you can see that as we increase the number of disks, we get closer and closer to a good approximation to the volume of the cone. So if I stop there, I've got 25 different disks there. And as you can see, it's getting pretty close to looking like a cone that we want. So this is how we work out the formula that we're going to use to work out these volumes. Notice that in the last one I had a number of disks, if you like. They were each little cylinders. So the volume of each one of those cylinders is just pi r squared h. Now let's think about what r and h are in here. Uh, r, the radius in each one of those disks, is just the y value. So I could replace r here with just y. The height of the disk is just, well, it depends on how many disks we've got. So what I've done here is say, a little small change in the volume is pi r squared times the height. We've got delta x, meaning a small change in x. So I've got a really, really thin little disk. If we divide both sides by delta x, and then integrate, as um, delta x tends to zero, this thing here is just the derivative, dv dx. Okay, so we get the volume is pi y squared dx, and that's the formula that you have to know. Here's both formulas for volumes of curves being rotated around the x-axis and volumes being rotated around the y-axis. These two formulas aren't given to you on the formula sheet, so you have to memorize them. The way I remember is just the formula for the volume of a cylinder, pi r squared h. So here, pi y squared dx. So here's the first example here. We've got the curve y equals x squared. We're going to rotate it 360 degrees around the x-axis between x equals 1 and 2. So you've just got to know the formula. Pi y squared dx. Well, what's y in this case? y is x squared. So we replace the y with x squared, and we get this pi x to the 4 dx between 2 and 1. I can put the pi out the front because that's just a number. Do the integral. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new number. 
substitute in 2 for x and 1 for x and subtract and that gives us 31 pi over 5 that's exactly or 19.5 units cubed to three significant figures sometimes in the exam they do ask you to give the answer exactly like this with pi in it so here we're going to look at the shape as it rotates around the x-axis so we've got this area under the curve y equals x squared between 2 and 1 and we're just going to rotate that around the x-axis now So you see we get this cool kind of lamp shade kind of shape and you can basically produce any shape that you like. Just change the equation of the curve and uh, let your imagination run wild as to what kind of shape you can produce using this idea. The second example is similar. We just have a slightly more complicated equation here. y equals 3 over 2x plus 1. And we're looking to find the volume when we rotate it completely about the x-axis so it's between 2 and 0 okay so the limits of the integration are 2 and 0 we've got pi y squared dx All right so this one here requires the reverse chain rule I'll put the 9 and the pi out the front 2x plus 1 squared on the bottom becomes 2x plus 1 to the minus 2 I've applied the reverse chain rule don't forget this times by 1 over the number in front of the x Tidied that up a little bit and then I'll substitute it in 2 and 0 and subtract it. It's very easy to go wrong in this step right here. You have to be really careful. Look out the signs here. So it's minus and a negative here. So this is going to be plus. It's really easy to make a mistake in here. So you've got to um, be very careful when you're putting all this together. So 18 over 5 pi units cubed. Here's an example where we've got a area between a two curves or in this case a curve and a line and we're rotating that area around the axes uh, first one here around the x-axis and then around the y-axis these are much more challenging so here we're going to look at what the shape looks like when we rotate this green area between the two uh, equations around the x-axis just to get an idea of what the shape actually looks like Okay, here's part B where we're going to rotate this same area, but this time we're going to go around the y-axis and see what kind of shape we're going to get when we do that. This time the curve is on the outside and you can see the straight line is on the inside. So we end up getting this bowl shape kind of cone shape cut out of the middle. There's two ways of doing it. Just like we did when we worked out the area between two curves, we could subtract the two equations before we integrate. The second method is you could find the volume that you get from rotating the blue line around the axis, which produces a cone, Subtract off the volume you would get from rotating the red curve around the x-axis. Remember, it's the, always the area between the line or the curve and the axis that gets rotated around. So if you subtract those two, you're going to get the volume of this weird kind of shape that you're going to get when you rotate this area around the axis. Okay, I've outlined both down here. Method 1, subtract the two equations first and then integrate. So you've got pi y squared dx. So the one on top, remember, is y equals x here. The one on the bottom is x cubed. The other way, work out the volume of the cone. A third pi r squared h, that's the formula for the volume of a cone. The radius at the bottom will be 1 and the height will be 1. And then you rotate y equals x cubed around the x-axis. So pi y squared dx. Okay, subtract those two and you see you get the same answer.
Same two methods we could use for getting the volume when we rotate that area around the y-axis. So the first method on the left here is, remember we're going around the y-axis now, so the formula is pi x squared dy. So tricky thing here is we've got to rearrange y equals x cubed, so you get x on its own, and then square it. So there's an expression for x squared. So this is a bit tricky here. If y equals x, then obviously x squared equals y squared. That one's a lot easier. But you've got to deal with x squared terms. So when we're rotating around the x-axis, in this case, it's this part here that would be on top, if you like, more to the right. So pi x squared dy. Okay. So you do the integration, substitute the numbers in, and you get the answer. The other way, in this case, is if, you, if we go back to the, if you remember the, the diagram, if you rotate this around the y-axis, then we're going to have the main curve around the outside, y equals x cubed, or in terms of x, it would be x equals the cube root of y, or x squared is the cube root of y squared, or y to the two-thirds. It'll be that one there, and then you'll have the inside one will be the, the cone. So you're going to have this volume subtract off the volume of the cone. Okay. So there's the second method for doing the same problem. Some questions in the exam may look like this one where they ask you to show that the volume is a certain value. So you need to set out your working very, very clearly. Uh, because they're already giving you the answer here, 27 over 40 pi, it's up to you to show that that's true. Because some of the calculators now can work out these volumes, including the, the new Casio calculator, the FX991ES, you may, well, you're more likely to get a question maybe like this, where we've got an unknown constant in the equation, uh, and while giving you this volume, what happens when this is rotated around, we get a certain volume, here it's 21 pi, and you have to work backwards to find out what the value of that constant is. This question here is very similar to an exam question where you had to find the coordinates of these three points and then rotate the region around the x-axis. Practice as always, there's some really good problems in the workbook, good luck.